Rock Salt Musecast Experience. Aaron, Dave, Patrick. Finally at ADP. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. <laughs> oh, yes, we did. Another week down is Memorial Day weekend. And we got some uh, special guests today. Mr. Rex Carroll and David from David White Roberts. Cross. David Roberts. David Thank you. Roberts. From White Cross. Greetings. Greetings, Earthlings. Um, I don't know if I would designate. I don't know if I'd designate the Earth, Earthling moniker to, to Mr. Peril or Eric Brindley <laughs> after what we witnessed here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we survived audio problems. We're all good now. Yeah. So, so Rex, you are, you, Rex, you sure. are uh, in uh, location unknown with your uh, submarine uh, made out of brick from the back down oh. there. They were just asking me where I was located. Uh, oh. I'm in my I'm in my studio north of Chicago. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. Which, for all intents and purposes, may very well as might as well be the North Pole. <laughs> You're having it is it is Santa! basically it is basically winter like for six months out of the year. So are is you it having, really? Yeah. Are you are you ha are you having why light? why anybody would want to live here is truly beyond me, <laughs> but. Here I am. Are you, are you having Lori over later to scope out some new White Cross tunes? <laughs> Light, Lightfoot? <laughs> uh, am I what? Are you um, having Lori Lightfoot over to scope out some new, oh, you know, yeah, no, some I, new White Cross tunes? I keep her. I got her tied up. She's in a box in the other room. <laughs> Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no, she showed up. Oh, God. <laughs> And you guys uh, are pretty belligerent with your politics, sir. Yeah, uh, yes, very. I am. I, I'm full transparency, completely belligerent. Yeah, you know, uh, there's no rain in Patrick in for some reason. I ain't scared. What are you going to do? Cancel me? I got to be. I got. I got to be relevant our, before you cancel me. Uh, <laughs> hey, somebody I uh, called up our bio. What's that? You, somebody you, called I did. up our bio here. I did. Uh, I so I thought of this this morning. I went to uh, chat GPT and I decided bring me up the bio for white cross. And then I wanted to see how accurate it would be. I know this is kind of a bit that Loudwire does, but I, it just occurred to me and I thought, well, I'm going to steal that this morning. Uh, I wanted to see how accurate this bio would be with you guys on the phone. So um, I'm just going to run through it real quick. Is that okay? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty uh incomplete and it's like uh it looks like this bio stops after about the year 1993 but go ahead yeah so uh real fast uh it's from chat gpt white cross was a christian uh, you see I, that's where i went uh it's already wrong was a christian band formed exactly. in the mid yeah formed in the mid 80s and hailed from the city of Chicago, Illinois the group init initially gained recognition for their energetic live performances, which I've, I heard about even back in the late eighties and early nineties that you were quite the, quite the act to see on stage. And a sound that, a comment on that. Uh, I'm going to get through the first, <laughs> first paragraph, but, and a sound that uh, blended heavy metal with elements of melodic rock white cross played a significant role in the Christian rock scene of the late eighties and early nineties, leaving a lasting impact on the genre. Yes, uh, yeah, we now, more, we were more docking than docking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I was working at a radio station. I wasn't really listening to a lot of Christian music in the late 80s and early 90s when you were doing it. But when I uh, came back to it in like the 2000s, I was like, oh, I missed out on this. I had no yeah. idea. That there was yeah. a Christian, I mean, there was Striper, yeah, and they had their own thing. They would kind of like, as far as like musically, I guess I would uh, align them as like a Christian Iron Maiden type thing. But you had that that real Sunset Strip sound to you. Mm -hmm. Sure did. Yeah, I, we could just pretty much leave off of this bio here now because it's so incomplete. Okay. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we had... Uh, well, you know, when Scotty, when I when I started working with Scotty, I found out, holy cow, this guy can sing as high as you want to go. Basically, there's no limits on his voice. And he truly had an iconic voice. So I thought, oh, man, uh, you know, before he auditioned um, for me, I was trying to nail him down to get him to sing. 
for me was uh, took a couple of months of chasing him down and he didn't want to do it. He was scared to do it. And so he finally did it. And I was like, Oh, please God, if you can just, if you can just even hold a note. Um, I could tell by the, the, the sound in his, in his voice when he talks even that people are going to love this. And sure enough, he could sing and he didn't even know he could sing as high as he could sing. So we had a lot of, uh, you know, in his best days, I think Scotty was a cross between, uh, for in my mind, he was a cross between Ozzy and um, Brian Johnson. Okay. ACDC. So to me, that was, you know, so it was just like, uh, great. So we had a couple songs and, and there was the uncanny vocal resemblance to Stephen Piercy. So everybody said, oh, White Cross sounds like rat. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I was like, I'm fine with that. I don't care. I'm not trying to imitate anybody, um, but if that's a useful, uh, that's kind of like marketing so that people can sort of get a handle on who is this band, you know, it's like they've never heard of before. So you're making a first impression on somebody and they go, oh, it sounds like rad. That's convenient, you know, so people can take that and say, okay, if you like that kind of sound, then you'll probably like this too. So it was useful. And then it kind of got, uh, we kind of got saddled with that label too. Um, I, uh, I don't think we sound anything like rat now at all. And then of course, fast forward many years later, and here we are with David Roberts. Um, you know, Scotty, Scotty had a great career, but he's kind of winding down a, a lot, you know, so it just kind of came time to where, where we weren't working together anymore and we were looking for somebody new and Mike, our drummer, uh, he said, well, you got to check out Dave Roberts. So I did. And I was like, holy moly, you know, this guy is like, uh, sorry for my language there. Um, uh, when I heard it, it sounded like uh, to, to my ears, I was thinking, well, David Coverdale. Okay. So we're not going to get to that. So um. We're not going to get to that. I was just about to launch into uh, what a great vocalist we found with David. I know. He kind of screwed the pooch on you, David. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, man. I was just building up, telling the story, you know. I know. You hit me yeah. with Coverdale, and then you were like, it was like, oh. Well, you know, the thing is that people, I've, I've sent our music around to people, just very unscientific. Uh, so what is our singer, what does he remind you of, or what does he sound like to you? And I've had people come back, say, some people say, oh, it sounds like Coverdale. Other people say, it kind of reminds me of uh, Ronnie Dio. And I'm like, yeah. And then some other people, I don't really hear it, but a, but a couple of people have said to me, kind of reminds me of Jeff Tate and uh, a little bit of Sammy Hagar. So I'm like, okay, so if, if you could have uh, Coverdale, Dio, Sammy Hagar, and Jeff Tate and all those guys make uh make a amalgamation of all those voices and it comes nice out word. sounding like dave like gee whiz you know that's uh that's pretty good company Absolutely. to be in that's a great list you know, to be dave, right. dave is very he's very bluesy which i like because dave and i come from the same dave would you say we come from the same uh musical background of things that we Absolutely. both listen to and things that we both yes. like. Absolutely. Yeah. Our, our interests, musical interests are right in line with each other. Yeah. So, you sure. know, songwriting wise, it's, it's great because, you know, I was like, well, if I'm working on a song and I go, well, what would, what would this sound like if I imagine, you know, like David Coverdale singing it? And then I think, well, just plug Dave into it. Boom. And there it is. It's such a good problem to have. Such a great problem. Such a I great mean, problem to have, I'm telling you. And that's just awesome. Yeah. So, you know, we'll find out uh <laughs> in another week or so. We'll be down in uh, <laughs> we'll be down in the studio with John Lowry uh recording Dave's vocals. That's the that's the next step on our album. I have all the faith in the world in you, Dave. Oh, so. that's gonna be amazing. It's gonna, it's gonna be great. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing the new. Sure. Are you guys at Immortal Fest this year? You guys are at Immortal Fest this year, right? Well, yes. I don't I think we are. Yeah. 
Yeah, I do believe yeah. you are as well. Are you uh, coming? Yeah, I might have to make my way up there just now that I know that. Um, well, I'm there's two of them. You know, there's uh, the first one in July, and then in in August. Yeah, the first one in July is kind of for all the troops that were popular, kind of originated a little bit in the '90s and kind of alternative, and you know, different side of the musical spectrum. And then yeah. the second one is, you know, that's Headbangers Ball. Right. That's I mean, we'll be so, at that one. Yes, yeah, so you guys are in September. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you guys are headlining that yeah. one. Yeah, we are kind of headlining, but there's not it's not that there's <laughs> um I don't know, Dave, would you say there's really a headliner to me? It feels like it feels like it's just yeah. everybody's there. Yeah, it feels to me like it's it's just having a church with a bunch of rock and rollers. It's, to me, it's a beautiful experience, you know. Um, yeah. We've been there twice, I think, right, Rex? And it's, you know, I, I don't know, about, I don't really get into the headlining thing because um, the message is, is what's important. And, you know, all the musicians that are there are just, you know, beautiful people. And we all share the same message, you know, and it's and it's all about Jesus, yeah. you know. See, and that's yeah. why I knew. So, that's why I knew that you guys resonated with me right there because I absolutely I hate labels and I hate ti- not even record, record. but I hate titles, and I hate yeah. like when, when people put like, even like within the church like and and please don't get offended by this but people are like have to put like I'm prophet so and so or bishop so and so yeah or like, we're the headliner right how about yeah. how about we just put yeah. in front of our name servant and let that be amen the title. amen. That's oh, exactly yeah. what we're doing. Absolutely, but yeah, I'm God has blessed us to God has blessed us to do it through music, you know. So it just doesn't get any better than that. Absolutely. Before right. uh, before we started the, this round two of the recording, I was asking um, when, since you guys are are literally one of the huge pioneers in the Christian rock metal genre that we know today. You guys are like one of the founding fathers. Um, would be on the Mount Rushmore of Christian metal if there was a, a, a Rushmore of, of the genre. Yeah, Did but we guys... don't like titles. Right. Yeah. Well, that's not a title. That would be a trophy, <laughs> Rex. That would, be a, that would be a trophy. I didn't say yeah. anything about trophies, but um, um, did you guys find that you got a lot of pushback um, from the style of music you were playing as far as Christian rock as uh, like us up-and-comers get today? As far as well, that can't be that can't music can't be of Jesus because it's not our our three in the hymnal and it's not it's not I'll fly away on a Sunday morning type deal. So did you guys get yeah. that same kind of resistance and pushback? Oh ever... yeah, I could comment to that on various levels. First of all, in every generation, you ever notice how every generation of rockers comes out and says, "Man, rock and or every generation first thing people say is rock and roll is dead." That's the first thing that comes out until there's always got to be some new band that comes along, some singer or a song or some guitar hero or somebody. Oh, you comes mean like along. just you mean like Justin Bieber, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think he was going to be the new singer for Van Halen. Oh, no. Yeah. So, um, you know, so every generation wants to say that rock is dead. So that's the first thing that goes out the window because rock and roll is alive and well. Uh, and we love the music. And, um, you know, Dave and I came up together at the same time, you know, in different different situations. You know, I didn't know Dave. He didn't know me. But we came up listening to the same music. We have all had the same influences. Uh, back in like 1977, 78, uh, I had a little Christian music group on campus at uh, university and we would travel around and believe me, we were tame, tame, tame and, and uh, nothing to get excited about, but, you know, we got shut down. We would play like our first set and then the pastor would shut us down and say, you guys are not allowed to come back for your <laughs> second set because, you know, this is, this is not right. God's not in this, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, we did get some pushback. And then when we started White Cross, um, we really didn't get any pushback 
up until the point where we started gaining, um, you know, when you gain notoriety on a national level, then, you know, once people have heard of you, then immediately, then you're a target, then you're a convenient target. So we, you know, kind of when we started hitting the top of our popularity level, uh, then we, there started being some weird magazine articles coming out like, oh, look at them. They don't even look like Christians. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't know that there was a, a dress code for Christians. Um, yeah, so we start. yeah, so we got like a little bit of pushback, but mostly um, it's just the ups and downs of being in a band. And I'd say, I'd say, you know, just... Uh, we get pushed back just just for being musicians. Um, you know, there's 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 a lot of uh, regular, polite, and civilized society does not does not appreciate uh, musicians and creatives who go against the rules or are actually reinventing the rules. Well, we're in luck no. then because I've seen society nowadays and there's nothing civilized about it. So we might be yeah. on the verge of breakthrough. Rocks all newscast experience here. Dave, Patrick. Hey, DP. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And our very good friends, White Cross, our new friends, White Cross in the house. All right. Family. <laughs> we're here. Yeah. We're live. I don't know. I don't know if you want to. I don't know if you want to be a part of that family, but you're you're a part of the family. <laughs> it's kind of a weird family. It's kind of weird, like it's like you don't mention that family in public. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, great job, boys. I don't have anything from Aaron in my ears at all. Did we lose Aaron again? He gone. Wow. I think he went to the grocery store to get some <laughs> Mountain Dew. Well, I'm going to ask Aaron's question. Who else is in the band currently? All right. So I'm Rex Carroll. I play guitar. And <laughs> David Roberts is here. He's the lead singer. And we also have uh, Michael Fian on the drums. And Benny Ramos is the bass player. And... Um, you know, especially from our early days, we went through a lot of personnel changes, right? Uh, Mike came in the band around uh, 1990. He came in. So he's been with us since 1990. And then in 2000, you know, some of you know that uh, I was not with the band from 1994 until 2000. There was a six-year hiatus for me. Um, I came back and... So we have what I refer to as the classic lineup. Uh, the group that's actually been together the most amount of time was was since the year 2000, when it's myself, Mike, and Benny, and now David since, uh, what, like 2019, 2020? Yeah. Right when the uh, pandemic was in full swing, that's when uh, Brother Dave came in, and we've just been rocking and rolling ever since. And now we're working on a new album, so here you go. Oh, nice! And uh, was was COVID kind of the catalyst for White Cross to you know get back together, so to speak? Because it, no. really, it doesn't sound no. like you guys really broke up or anything like that. It's just hiatus. Uh, well, we haven't had any new music since in well over 20, 25 years. Uh, and that had more to do with the situation with the difficulties of myself and Scotty, the, uh, you know, the original singer. Uh, and Scotty, as, as we've all acknowledged, is an iconic singer and was a great singer in his time. And he's kind of winded down. Um, he's not really doing much anymore. So uh, the band has continued on and, and uh, had just coming across David the way we did was just a, a tremendous blessing. So now we're like revitalized and refueled and restocked and reloaded and we're, we're ready for it. So new music is just like, it's like a natural byproduct. 
Is it just like pouring right out of you now, writing songs and stuff like that? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And um, like, well, the 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 songs that we have on the new record are some of, for me personally, I think they're some of the best things that I've come up with, and um, I just I love the way it's sounding, and you know, I I don't know what else I can say. There's there's uh there's like some more diversity on this album it's like there's a certain amount of you know i wanted to stay true to our roots because i know people think of white cross they think there's a certain sound that they want to hear expect to hear so we wanted to deliver on that and then uh there's a couple of acoustic numbers and some things that are just um you know pushing the envelope a little bit i think every album i want to do things that are familiar and i also want to introduce new elements as well so so um during the writing yeah. process you you guys had that you said like 20 years since new music so for the writing process do you just have stuff like you're pulling out from a from a catalog that you've written during the uh, downtime or are you guys writing all new stuff where everybody's completely involved in the whole writing process uh yes um and yes <laughs> and um, <laughs> i don't know i mean dave is has written some uh, interesting lyrics that he's just kind of had and i and i've encouraged him to he's like hey man you know whenever you got something send it my way and sometimes it resonates with a guitar riff and sometimes it doesn't and sometimes like uh, one of the songs we're working on right now is called Wishing Well. It'll be on the new record. Uh, I actually had those lyrics and I sat on them for a couple of years. And then one day I just pulled them out and boom, there was like, I could hear the, uh, like the chords and the melody and the music and all that. And then it fit. And so we just, uh, we're always, you know, when you're a musician, you're always writing. You're always coming up with your next thing. Now, uh, I might be prying a little bit too deep right here. Um, uh, you can evade the question or not. Now, is there a tentative release date for said new album? There sure is. It's called... Uh, called None see. Your Business, Patrick. Shut up. It's called <laughs> WWR. Whenever we're ready. <laughs> We get that answer a lot from uh, bands on this show. When's the next album coming out? Well, you know, ready? if you don't, if you don't mind me complaining a little bit, it's like uh, you know, people don't pay for albums anymore. Yeah, Record companies, you know, in the old days. Oh, we're going in the studio in June. There should be a new record out by October. There's, you know, there's like you got six weeks in the studio, and you have a totally pro studio. You got an engineer, producer, studio interns assistance budget you know <laughs> budget that's the big one lots of help from the label you know that's like what the record label was supposed to do back in the old days and uh of course they had many more ways of um of uh, obfuscating the royalty reports as well also so mm -hmm. you know it's a mixed blessing but so nowadays it all you want to make a record great go make a record it's like you figure it out on your own by yourself. There's you're not going to get any help from anybody. So well, that's that's where it is now. Yeah, uh, I'm walking in those shoes, Rex. I don't know if Dave wants to comment on that or not, but well, that's my that's my take on it. Go ahead, Dave. That's absolutely the truth. I mean, you know. You got to do it your own, you know, you got to you got to take care of everything yourself and then uh, you know, and then when it's released, you know, if you have you know, distribution and if people dig it, then, you know, the shows will come and the rest of it will fall into place, you know, but uh, the process to get to that point is where we're at right now. Um, all the drum tracks have been laid. The bass parts have been laid. Uh, most of the guitar tracks, I would say, have been laid. And so just got to do the vocal tracks, uh, finish them up in Nashville, hopefully, Lord willing. And um, it's a matter of mixing and getting it, getting it released. So I think it'll be out this year, personally. Uh, yeah. But I'm, I'm a positive thinker, but and I, you know, I have all the faith that we're on the right path. To what uh, you know, God wants us to do, and so, you know, you can't have anybody better on your side than that. You know, right? Uh, I have faith in all of it. I really do. 
Now, you know, with the technology the way it is and, and what's happened to the record industry with the labels and everything and everything streaming now and all that, do you find uh, that it is more conducive to being creative now more than, say, back in the late 80s, early 90s? Or was there more creativity with all those people around and a record company that you had to appease and that sort of thing? You know what? I love the fishbowl. Oh, you love, do. You I do. love I love the I love the pressure. I love I I more than anything else in the world, I love being with my guys. I love being with my band. That's like that's part of my family. And um and I love the fans. I love the moments, you know, I love this. I love the studio. I love the camaraderie. I love it. You know, like when the, the higher the expectations, you know, I love those moments. It's kind of like, you know, you got guys who play great in practice and then they, they disappear on game day and you got guys who show up in, at the games. And I, I love showing up at practice and I love showing up in the game and the bigger yeah, the stage, I- the bigger the stage, the more I love it. That's, let's talk that's just speaking for myself. Let's talk about the stage for a minute because I haven't seen you guys live, but I have heard that seeing White Cross is quite the spectacle. Is, is that an accurate statement? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, I'll be totally honest with you guys. We 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 were we were pretty pretty lame when we started out back in 1987. We didn't have a clue. Uh, it took many years. But we worked at it. We worked at it. We worked at it. We pulled ourselves up by the brute straps. And now we're a bunch of old farts. So we don't jump around as much as we used to. But um, I don't know. We put on a great show. And the, the, the band is like, you know, like every time we've played together it has been better than the last. So um, that's awesome to hear. Yeah, you know, I love the uh, I love this uh, Immortal Fest that we have coming up in um September, that's going to be amazing. And and where is Immortal Fest at? Versailles, Ohio, at the BMI Center. It's online. You can check it out. And, and what's that called, Patrick? Is that the sales or the verse? I'm in Kentucky, David. So <laughs> they, they pronounce it Ohio sales. I mean, in France, I think it's Versailles or whatever. Versailles? It's Versailles. Oh, okay. but in, uh, Ohio, they pronounce it Versailles. Because okay. everything is for sale. Yeah. <laughs> well, ain't that the truth? Let's come back and do one more break with the boys from White Cross. And uh, this is the Rock Salt Musecast Experience. Rock Salt Musecast Experience. Uh, Dave Patrick. Day of Audio Issues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, get some, <laughs> get some audio issues. <laughs> and our uh, very good new friends, White Cross, Rex Carroll, Dave Roberts, welcome to the show again. And Thank you. Patrick, Patrick would say, welcome to the circus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Thanks for having the circus. There has definitely been as a, a, a ghost in the machine, as one of you mentioned, for this entire interview. There's like something that doesn't want this interview to happen no this is like this whole thing has been like a trip to walmart on welfare day it has been been a nightmare it's yeah yeah Yeah, it's uh you know come back another time guys and uh i promise it'll go well i can't promise but i hope it'll go better (laughs) we'd be happy to come back for sure well yeah uh, you know, uh, uh, Aaron's mic, for some reason, was muted all through the last break. So I know he's got some questions for you. And I'm just going to let it let Aaron run away with it. Well, I just want to know on the new album, well, there was always something iconic on the White Cross albums. Uh, Rex, you did an instrumental every single album. Um, uh, my favorite being the one on uh, Triumph Return. Uh, but... Is that going to be on the new album too? Are we going to see something uh, instrumental like before? Uh, it's one thing I would never break faith. Okay. With with the fans about that, that's like that is a 
that's just a that's just a thing that you you don't mess with that. It's like buying Cracker Jacks and not getting the toy surprise. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I mean, let's you know. Do you want to share the name? Do you want to share the name of the song? Uh, yeah, I forget what is it called. I can't remember what it's called. I thought that was the name of the song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was like, uh, just totally mess with your fans. Just totally mess with your fans, Rex, and I forget <laughs> that's the name of the song. Uh, it's, it's, it's iconic, as usual. I know you can't hear this, but... but I, I see your fingers working the fretboard, though. Oh, yeah. Rex has his guitar in hand. Something like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to buy the record. I uh I was listening to I was listening to uh the first album today and um I was listening to the the to you working the guitar. I'm trying to I was trying to look up the name of the the song and I can't remember the name of the song. I'm really bad with names. Must be uh, something in the water. Yeah. No, it's it's uh, uh what was the you have an acoustic one on on the first one, right? uh you're not acoustic i mean solo one yes okay yeah Yeah. okay fantastic i was like wow you you know it's one thing when you listen to uh some of these bands when you're a kid and you go uh i I, i'm thinking of like mr big right now i I saw mr big live and i went "Ah, they're pretty good and that dude's got Leather fringe hanging from his guitar it makes no sense to me, but whatever, it's totally over the top. Hey, they were uh, amazing. Mr. Big is an amazing band. Yeah, and then yeah, uh, and then the I go. Too. You would love what? I love the singer too for that band. Yeah. Oh Absolutely. yeah, he had a great love, voice. Love yeah. the whole band: guitar, bass, drum, yeah. singer, right down the line. Everybody's great in that band. They they yeah. are all great, and uh, I'm a new fan of Paul Gilbert within the last few years because. I started uh, checking him out on YouTube and I was just like, wow, I don't remember it being this great, but I think that, uh, you know, you all started out with a great foundation, but uh, people don't remember that you've also, this has been your job for 25, 30 years. So -hmm. you should get better over time, but uh, you you had to, one would think, yeah. Right. But you had to start with some, some seed of greatness to begin with as far as talent goes and, and, and mastering the guitar. Well, um, success is, is 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. (laughs) So longevity, you know, there's, there's, there's brilliant, brilliantly talented individuals all the time. And you see them, they zoom up, and then that, like a big firework in the sky, they explode. And uh, some of them go on to join the uh, the 27 Club with, uh, you know, Jim Morrison and Jimi Hendrix and some of those people. And then some of them just, you know, like they make a big shot and then they fade away. And then other people, you know, there's bands and artists that have been around, you know, like year after year and decade after decade. And they just work they keep they keep at it and um you know like it kind of goes to uh what we were talking about before it's like i love being with my band and there's nothing better than being in that fishbowl i love the fishbowl yeah so, that so when it, well, you're driven by that we, you know we love that we love that and so we keep we keep working at it it's just it is it's just it's your personality it's it's who we are and it's what we do and it shines through too i mean when you're when you're really devoted to it, it's not just a, you know, a side gig for you or something you're doing because you just enjoy it, you know, hobby like stuff. No, when, it, when you're actually like, this is who you are, man, that that part shows through in the music. Um, the new. So on Spotify, you got Fear No Evil, which is the new single. But it's yeah. kind of a mini, it's kind of a mini EP, right? It's got three songs on it: "Man in the Mirror" and "Fear No Evil" as well. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, Lion of Judah. Last last year, we really felt a very strong need. You know, uh, people need to be able to hear something with uh, David's voice on it. 
So that was the only thing that we had was it's like, well, we're we're working on the new album, but in light of the fact that that's going to take some time till that comes out, what can we put out quickly just so people can get a taste of what they can expect with David uh, behind the microphone. So we had these pre-production, you know, songs that are just their, um, like, like some of the guitars are computer amp simulated guitars. They're not like recorded through real guitar amps with microphones and things like that. So everything is not uh, the final sound, you know, the sound, the final sound will change a little bit, hopefully for the better uh, on the finished version. But uh, we wanted to just put something on and it's like, okay, these three songs that we have are close enough that we could just put them out. If we would have had another song um, developed enough, we might've put out another song, but as it was, we have this little three song disc. And kind of a teaser. Yeah, a teaser, exactly. Just uh, something to whet the appetite. Here it is. Nice. It's, awesome. You know, with the incredible artwork from uh, Wendell Wright. And, um, you know, it's we've got a little back cover. It's, it's you know, it's uh, and it's, it's kind of a limited edition. They, they, they pressed us a, a specific number. And then once they're gone, they're gone. And if we have any left over at the end, uh, we'll just hang on to them and then We'll do something with them for an auction or or something. You know, we'll we'll let them all out, but um, you know, there's not that many that are left. So I don't know. So, so get it while you can. Out. Yeah, get it while you can, and the new album is coming. Perfect. It's it's titled "When We're Ready." <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right, brother. And it's got that it's got that song called. Uh, yeah, I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> yeah oh you know the one that goes um yeah all right oh that one <laughs> you know, it's crazy it's crazy because all musicians all musicians are that way and we look at each other dave tell me if i'm wrong in this we look at each other in rehearsals we go oh yeah that you know the one that um yeah i know which one you're thinking of yeah uh how yeah. You know? i don't know we just yeah the one so that goes like da 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 yeah that one yeah we we had uh, some great guys on last week, a band called Ritual Servant, and uh, they sound like Metallica. They're very good. Uh, I really enjoyed having them on. All their albums are like these Latin names, and I didn't ask them this question, but I really wanted to, which was uh, being a DJ for 17 years. Are you guys just playing jokes on the DJs when you make up these album names or song titles that we can't pronounce? <laughs> I mean, is that the gig? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, I figured. Marketing. Um, what's that? Marketing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, uh, you're in a, uh, a, a Zeppelin tribute band. There's a, the, an argument all the time on Jermaker, on the song Jermaker, because a lot of people call it Dire Maker, and I was always taught it was Jermaker. What's the correct pronunciation of, of the song? Uh, Rex, what do you think about that question? I think that that's a... I don't have an answer for that. I don't even know how to pronounce one tongue right. You know, the <laughs> one tongue song. I'm like, okay, you know, I got in trouble for this, you know, because we're in the, you know, life right now with the woke people. And I'm sorry if I'm out of line going here, but, you know, I'm, I, I used to tell jokes when I was, uh, you know, like sometimes guitarist has to, uh, tune his guitar or something, you know, and I'd tell jokes in between, and uh, I actually had a sold-out show in Dallas, and uh, I ended up getting blackballed, being being accused of being uh, racist, because, I, you know, I was just telling some, you know, like, one tongue, the one tongue song, you know, and yeah. there's this uh, female comedian called Angela Johnson, who does this nail salon joke, and I set the joke up, you know, it was like, uh, so has anybody heard of Angela Johnson, the uh, Hispanic uh, comedian? She does that nail joke. Like, Honey, why you, why you, you want Creole jail for your nail? <laughs> oh, so I've I seen that her. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I told that joke anyway. I ended up getting blackballed and <laughs> for for that, you know. So anytime yeah. there's any questionable, uh, 
Just avoid it at all costs. I, I just, I just passed. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, let me go ahead. I, I'm going to help you out, uh, Mr. Roberts, and and just go ahead and confirm Dave's uh, Dave's theory uh, about Jamaica. That that just came from people in Kentucky, us rednecks here, because we can't say Jamaica. So it's just, <laughs> hey man, we're going to travel Anchor. over to Jamaica and we're gonna we're gonna play this tag on Led Zeppelin and we're gonna rock out. So don't you tread on me, boy. We're gonna rock out Jamaica. Woo! I'm, I'm sure oh, that, that must have been it. I'm sure that. Yeah, I always thought it. it was Dire Maker myself, but to, to answer your question, I thought it was Dire Maker. Yeah, see, but, and, and yeah. I mean nobody's gonna nobody's gonna come to fisticuffs over it, but uh, yeah. when you I was come to my neck of the woods, you come to my neck of the woods. We're fighting over it, bud. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have a PBR in one hand and a, and a, and, a, and brass knuckles in the other. It's your maker, uh, you California liberal. Hey, as, <laughs> as long as we can go. As long as as long as we can go mud bogging afterwards. Not in my town, yeah. boy. Not in, <laughs> you ain't welcome here. <laughs> Hey Rex, I did have a question for you as a guitar player. Um, I, I understand that a lot of it just comes to you, and and you know it's just playing around on the guitar. Does it? In my time of playing guitar, and I'm not a good guitar player at all, uh, but when I was really into it, I always had it with me, sitting. You know, I'd be sitting there watching TV and just trying something out or. Is that the way it is with you? And then you you come across something, and you go, "Well, that's really good. I'm going to keep that, and maybe that'll make the next album." See this little device here? This is yeah. This is called an iPad, <laughs> and there's there's a little app right here on it. Looks like this. It's a free app. It's called Voice Record Pro, and it is faster than a cassette tape. You like. I carry the iPad with me everywhere, and when I have an idea of a vocal melody, something I want to hum into a microphone, or if I have a guitar handy, I just, all ideas have to be recorded and documented immediately, because if you, oh, I'll do it tomorrow morning, I'm too tired, I'm going to bed, it'll be gone. Yeah. I learned that. Oh, um, yeah, sure. So, or if you're driving in the car, you got to... <laughs> and then you know and you can and i i talk notes out loud to myself and uh there's that crazy weird rex dude he's talking to himself again <laughs> um, <laughs> so you know but it, the when it, when you get an idea you have to run with it it's a it's a um, what do you call it it's a mandatory thing it's like you're required it's part of the job you know you get it as a creative you get an idea it is it's your it's your sworn <clears throat> duty it's your pledge that you okay you know get it down and then work on it and get some lyrics going and get it over to dave and then get and it, it's cool because dave's got a little recording studio out back and um and um you know we get things done and we get ideas across and uh we get that's how we write songs together and that's uh that's how we do I, it. I don't know if you so, guys so are, it, I don't know if you guys are like me, but sometimes I go back through my voice memos and I'm so embarrassed about what I laid down. I just want to set my <laughs> phone on fire. It's like, oh, oh yeah. what were you thinking? Oh yeah. Well, you know, the thing is you layer up like you just let it go for a few months. And after like four months, you go through and you listen to things like, oh, I don't even I don't even remember this. And like, where did that come from? Like, oh, geez, that was garbage, 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 delete, 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 delete. And then, and then like, what's, wait a minute, what's this? Oh, that sounds kind of interesting. Oh, maybe I could work on that one. So, you know, that's how things get started. Yeah. There's 10 deletes. Yeah. Sometimes for, I have to go every... back through like, like the morning after to make sure I didn't share it with somebody. It's like, <laughs> yeah. wait, 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 no, yes, no. Yes. Because so we always get a random, ahead. we always get random text from Patrick going, "What do you think of this?" <laughs> <laughs> so is it so is it hard playing the guitar, driving, and operating the iPad all at one time? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I used to. I, years ago, I worked for a print shop, and I had uh, 
I had a clipboard and uh, with notes on it and two cell phones and packages. And I'd be answering both cell phones. This is a true story. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not, I'm not making it up. And, you know, sometimes you'd be driving down the road and I get a call. Hey, Rex, uh, you know, go over to such and such. Look, you can just do a U-turn, like right wherever you're at. And, you know, so I have practice. <laughs> You know, we've got a lot of Francis makes perfect. We we've got songs that we did uh, demos on that you know are not going to even make the album. So that's oh yeah, that's kind of cool too. Rex is Rex is constantly writing, and, and there's you know, and they're all really good in my opinion. And but there's stuff that you know, well, this one's better than that one, so that one take goes low down low on the totem pole, you know. So we, well, I got to say, White Cross has been very. Rex has been very. Uh, patient, you know, with this album, um, you know, he has told me he wants us to be the best album, White Cross album ever. And so we've been very patient and, you know, we've written a lot of songs that nobody's going to hear that won't make it to the album. And well, uh, Rex is constantly writing. Constantly. There's always the box set. The box set. Yeah. 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 That's where this all one's gonna be stuff, like the yeah. This one's going to be like the White album anyway, because there's going to be a lot of songs on this album. Well, you've been saving up for a long time. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I got a, in all seriousness, you got this, uh, uh, you know, voice memo thing, and and you're you're laying down all these ideas. Uh, do you ever go, hey, wait a minute, this idea, this little riff will go good with this one, and start to piece together a song from all the different little ideas you you came up with over time, or Absolutely. is that how it works? Absolutely. Ah. Absolutely. You have a thing that you think was all, oh, this was great by itself. And then you get another idea like three months later and you go back to the, to the first thing you had and you start cannibalizing yeah. it. And it's like, yeah. okay, well, you know, it's the way the cookie crumbles. So yeah. you've never, you never lost your love for what you do. No, no it's like, it's like breathing yeah. air or drinking yeah. water. You know, it's just, it's, that's the world we live in. Gotcha. Well, I could go on for hours. As you said, you could go on for four hours, but we've already gone on for well over an hour. Uh, I would like both of you guys to come back again, if you don't mind, especially when I've got all my technical difficulties worked out. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt, we'd love to come back. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Rex? Yeah, well, you know, I'll look at my busy schedule and I'll see if we can accommodate it. <laughs> yeah. I, I noticed I hadn't gotten a response from Rex, so Dave, yeah, you're our office, <laughs> our, our office will get yeah. back to you shortly on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, that'd be that'd be great. Where Rex know? goes, I go. All right. Well, he, he said he'd call, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for coming on, guys. And uh, all right, thank guys. And, and honestly, thank you for the new music. There's going to be so many White Cross fans that are so excited out there. Oh, yeah. this uh, I, I can't wait for people to hear this. I think it's some of our best songs that we've ever done. And uh, we always say there's an uh, internal ethic that we have in the band. That everything that you're working on needs to be the best thing that you've ever done. Right. Well, and there's there is definitely a growth in uh in this album or in the three songs that that are on spotify currently yeah uh, there's definitely growth but uh still eh, no doubt that it's white cross yeah that's so, right there you go yeah it's a great it, well it's going to be a great album when you release it the three songs that are out are fantastic thank you oh, good Thanks thank so you much. guys oh uh where can people reach you um, well, we're working on a website, which is, uh, I'm not sure if it's out yet. So just for the moment, um, look for our, uh, our Facebook page. And, uh, we also have a little, uh, there's a white cross warriors. I know that that's like a group on Facebook. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if our website page is up and running yet or not. Pro one of the problems that we've had is, is uh we've been ripped off so many times over the years by people who oh i'm going to create web content for you guys and us no. being, you know uh non-technical people you know like for example uh my name rexcarol.com was has been taken away 
Uh, there's a guy who's got the domain and he renews it every year and uh, and he won't give it back and he's not doing yeah. anything with it. So Yeah, because he wants you, you to know. pay. Yeah, and there's things, uh, we've had various versions of whitecross.com. You know, we started out with that. Uh, and at the time, the internet was kind of a new thing and we were slow to catch on. So we didn't know about things like domain registration and right and renewal fees and things like that so you know so we've lost a lot of things so we're it seems like we're always rebuilding the web page so well that'll be back you know you think that musicians might be kind of flaky uh in my experience computer guys way flakier than musicians <laughs> right well computer guys write the algorithms yeah they 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 have the mic, as I would say. That the rest of us have to live by. So Right. So uh, well, hey. God bless you guys, man. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Thank it's you a, so much. It's an honor for us and a privilege. So, you know, um, we and we love our fans and we can't we can't wait to get out and play live for you guys and um, you know, have new music for you and everything else. And we really appreciate all your support over the years that it's been and we're really just so excited about keep pushing ahead with new projects so yeah. it's all it's all great and we love you guys we love you Amen. and and you. uh i i got two other things i want to jump jam in here real quick uh jam them in jam them in dave you're in the zeppelin tribute band what's it called again uh the zeppelin tribute the Zeppelin Tribute. Oh, I had it. I had it. See, a name I can remember. Um, and uh, uh, you're playing some shows coming up, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm at, actually at a show in Missouri right now. We had a show last night. Going to do another one tonight. And then I've got to go back to Dallas to do one tomorrow. But uh, And then, it's, uh, then I'm working on uh, my studio stuff to visit with Rex. Uh, we're going to be in Tennessee uh, recording the vocals uh, with John Landry in, uh, in Tennessee to finish up the vocals for this new White Cross album. Fantastic. Fantastic. And Aaron, being just a major White Cross fan, you didn't get to talk a lot. Do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I'm just looking looking forward to the uh, instrumental project that's going to be on the new album, and I look forward to the new album. And and, and definitely since I, I, the only time I got to see uh, White Cross live uh, again, like today, uh, uh, had technical problems. The, the <laughs> venue had technical problems, and they did a little acoustic set, which I was grateful for. Um, but I didn't get to see the full uh, stage presence and all that, and so I'm looking forward to seeing the new guys. Um, live, um, whether it be in the in in the south or in the in the west, uh, I hope you guys tour. Um, uh, we had another iconic uh, older Christian band um, on about three months ago called Pillar. Um, yeah. So maybe you guys can do something together. I know you guys probably know each other, and uh, maybe that would be something we'd see. So. Um, I did find you can go to Dark Star Records to yeah, find out yes. more information about White Cross's uh, uh, album and see their video and all that. And so, mm -hmm, for uh, sure. And, and so, go to um, those interested to, for the new uh, White Cross stuff. Go to Dark Star Records. Yeah. Dot net. Dot net. Dot net. Yeah. All yeah. right. Thank, thank you guys. We love you. Right, guys. Love uh, you guys. Have a yeah, good show tonight. Well, yeah, and uh, we'll talk talk at you soon. Yeah, all right. God bless you guys. Bye bye. All right, bye. -bye. All right, bye.